ragtimey mood today and uh, actually today I'm gonna play a lot of bits and pieces of songs because one of the things I want to talk about is when I would use a thumb pick when I wouldn't use a thumb pick so we get into that a little bit later and we'll talk about the hinge bar situation too a, a little bit a couple of great questions that came up on the forum in the meantime it is Friday November 9th here in Northern California well it's actually it kind of depends on when you're watching this but when I'm shooting this it's Friday morning little rain last night and now a little sun beautiful day here so I'm gonna kind of quickly go through some of the um, some of the stuff we had cool lessons this week well one of my particular favorites the question is which one was it way too fast on that one huh or Okay, I'm not going to mention any of the songs I play today. They're all going to be part of today's trivia contest. Uh oh, contest means there has to be a prize. Not really. There could be a winner though, who can name all the songs that I uh, that I alluded to. But those two are pretty obvious because they were what we put in the target program this week. It was, of course, "Take It to the Limit" and "Joni," "Big Yellow Taxi." So, got a few more uh, songs I think by each of those guys, sort of in the pipeline. But a lot of what I'm going to do today too is kind of play through some stuff that I'm thinking about doing lessons on. That's, that's why, um, that's where a lot of this stuff kind of comes from. That's one I wouldn't do with a thumb pick. It's going to be the hardest one for anybody to identify, I guarantee, in today's stuff. What else do we have? So we have Big Yellow Taxi and um, Take It to the Limit. And uh, another kind of episode, this was uh, Sandy again working on um, transitions in songs. This time we talked about how to get through some of the parts in, in Windy and Warm. And to get, anyway, to make them, make them connect. So I hope people are picking up tips from some of the stuff that I've been doing with Sandy lately, because she's... She's making some big progress. So, a couple of student reviews. We had took a look at um, Jay did a great job of more than words. Didn't have a lot to tell him except uh, to work on dynamics a little bit and stuff like that, and watch out for rushing in a, in a few things. I think, and then um, another good version of Wagon Wheel by Pete. So, uh, um, and I'm glad to see, as I mentioned probably last week, that there are uh, seem to be a lot more things kind of ha coming up in the uh, uploaded videos. So uh, more student reviews on the way. I'll try to get to maybe two or three next week instead of just one or so. Um, that's it for the big news. Oh no, we had a cool listening post. Steve, um, Little Feet. Um, I hope you guys have seen Steve Rose's um, blog or article on, on Little Feet because they were, uh, you know, somebody that he stumbled into accidentally when he went to, as a teenager, um, to see Electric Light Orchestra, and they were they were the opening act, and he was he was knocked out. So um, Steve's story on on uh, Little Feet is really interesting. So I hope people have had a chance to check that out. We did get it all up and running properly a few hours after we thought it was. But and uh, two big questions that I want to get to now is when. Uh, exercises for working on a hinge bar, and, and the, th whole, the whole thing with the hinge is the, the knuckle closest to the palm of your hand has got, that's the hinge, that's what's going to bend, right? And then the other knuckle has to be hyperextended. Now that doesn't mean bent backwards. You can see mine doesn't bend backwards very far. Matter of fact, not far at all. Not as much as my little finger does. Now, this would make it much easier if my third finger had that same kind of 
um, motion. None of my fingers bend very far back. Well, first finger does, I guess, a little bit. But um, there, you definitely can improve this by gently pushing this, this finger against your thumb, pulling this knuckle down with the muscles that are down in the palm of your hand, this will not. This might make it a little bit more flexible. The biggest thing it'll do, though, is make it more. Uh, is strengthen the muscles that you need to do that. So work on it, and you can even just do it without the other bar, leaving your first finger out of the equation, and just practice pushing it down, like where it would be an A chord. And don't worry if you're killing the first string. That actually is generally the least of the problems there. It's a matter of getting the three that you're trying to play sounding good. So, so that's kind of my, my advice on that. The, um, the other question I wanted to kind of get to is when I would use a thumb pick and when I wouldn't. And generally, I, you get more volume, more octane out of the thumb pick than you can out of your thumb without like really destroying your thumb, ripping up the skin or, or breaking nails or things like that. So when I'm playing a song, but the trade-off is you don't have anywhere near as much control of the tone. So if I'm playing, playing just a bass note, I can get different volumes. I can play kind of quietly. I get more pick noise, but I can't get this kind of variety in the sound. Hard nail, softer nail, little to no nail, very soft. Could muffle it down here, which you could do with that with the thumb pick as well. So you can alter the tone a little bit by muting the bass with the thumb pick. But I would so in a song like this. to come out and that just wouldn't have the same kick if I don't play with the thumb pick. The song you've heard me play many times. This one I really want to belt it out. Etc. So that one just doesn't work without the thumb pick as much, especially in this. How it goes. Um, so, so there, are, there are a couple tunes I would almost always play with a pick. Earlier I played one that I wouldn't. So I'll give you a second chance on that one to figure out what it was. Another one I would never do with a pick because there's too much I want to do in the bass. So that also gets into a little jazzy chord part where I want the bass to be much softer. I'm, not, I'm using only skin on the bass here. What happens next? Can't talk and play at the same time. This is a song I should do a lesson on. One of the songs, the first time I heard it, I thought that was one of the greatest things I've ever heard. I wished I'd written that. Okay, let me find my thumb pick. I'm going to try to stumble through another one I've been thinking about. This is one that is very rusty, but this is one of the coolest tunes I've ever heard, too. And I'm going to sign off on this one and tell you that will I be back next week? Possibly. have to be out of town on Friday, but we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, I've, I've given you a lot of clues of some of the things that I'm thinking about doing lessons on. This is another one, and uh, because I, we need to get some more high-end guitar pieces in here.
around your speakers. It's about as loud as I can play. Without strumming. That's it. Identify all those songs and you probably get to pick which one of them I do the lesson of next. See you next week.